Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dave D Fishing. So it is that time of year when we gotta start getting ready for to tug. Um, it's a love-hate relationship with these fish. You're gonna lose tons of gear. You're gonna lose pounds and pounds of sinkers. You're gonna lose hooks. You're gonna snap stuff. You're gonna swear, um, but it's a good time, trust me. So um, this time of year, we gotta, when we're fishing for tug, there's a couple of different things we got to do. So we got to make sure our crab traps are ready and we got to go catch those green crabs. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to catch these green crab for tatog. There's a couple other different types of crab you can use for these. Um, I like catching green crab because it's a little easier for me. I can just leave a trap and call it a day and pick it up in a couple hours and it works really well. Short crabs you can go pick up under rocks. Um, they will go into traps, but they're they're very skittish. Um, and then you have those white leg or Jonah crabs. Those work really good too. Those are my favorite to use, but um, you need to watch the regulations on those Jonah crab. Um, up here in Massachusetts, it's five inches they need to be at the carapace. And then I think you could keep 25. Green crab, you need an LOA to go catch those. It's a letter of, the, letter of authorization you need from the state along with your saltwater fishing license. And I think that's really it. So in this video, I'm going to show you what kind of traps I use. Um, basket trap that you can buy at Walmart. I think they're 10 bucks. And then I made this weird four door that was originally a four door trap that I modified to catch me more crab. Works really well. The Both of them are beat up. So um, and then both of them have different situations in which I'd prefer one over another. So Again, if you don't know what a blackfish is and you live in Massachusetts and you like saltwater fishing, there are thousands of videos on them. Um, they're really hard fighting fish. They're frustrating to catch sometimes, um, but they are a blast to reel in. And then when you hook one in the rocks from shore, it's really rewarding to get some of them in, especially in the boulder fields. And later on, when I actually go for them, I'll make a video on um, the types of tackle and rigs I use for them. So, all right, let's get to the video about the traps for green crab. Let me show you the types of traps there are out there. These ones are well loved, so, um, all right, here we go. So you just have your regular basket trap. So with these, um, what I do is I grab a piece of wire, um, like this right here. So this is actually from a, for a fence post. And what I do is I loop it at the bottom right here and just sort of pinch it shut. And then this will actually go through the pogies. I, I like to use fish for bait, like pogies, mackerel, oily, oily fish. I'm not a chicken leg person. I don't really believe in it. Um, so you actually push the pogie head onto here, thread it on, and then this will actually go up and underneath this, and you can actually squeeze that shut um, to keep that pogey from coming off and the crabs try to rip it off, so it works really well. So when you're using this, um, another important thing to look at is how the trap sits on the bottom. So this thing, it's like four years old, but we can still make it work. So if you look, you see how that's all raised at the side? That actually will um, keep some of the crabs from going in. They'll just sort of give up. Some of them, I've watched them do it. So um, keep an eye on the type of <clears throat> um, bottom you're fishing. So if there's tons of rocks around, just may, try and find an area like close to it that this can lay flat. And otherwise, if it's tipped like this, crabs can get in over there. They'll, try, they'll climb it, and some of them will get in 100%. But um, you will catch more crab if this thing's laid flat. And then you see it's bent over here. Make sure... This, this isn't um, bent like that. You want to make sure it's nice and round so this mesh can lay flat for you. Um, if I'm fishing in a, t a really tidally area uh, with a lot of current, I will throw some stones in here, probably maybe like five ounces a piece. I'll keep a couple of them with me. Um, I'll store them in the bucket. I keep like four or five of them and chuck them in here with the pogey just to help get that thing sunk to the bottom quick so it's not drifting way out in front of you as it sinks. So um, that's trap number one. And then with the, as far as um, string and that type of thing, do not use this stuff right here. This is what my son likes to use. Um, this is that Home Depot 
rope that you can buy in the front, or it's free in the front of the store. I mean, it'll get you by, no problem, but um, this, this stuff is really prone to snapping, especially if it touches barnacles and stuff, it will shred and you will lose your trap. Um, and then also the thread that comes with, or the rope that comes with these basket traps. These are extremely weak. This thing's broken like four or five times. And sometimes it's a good thing because this, say this side will get snagged and you pull on it and the sides will snap and you could actually still get it back. But um, yeah, I'm usually in a rush when I'm using these, but those are some adjustments I've made in the past. Um, got this little eight, this little snap ring right here. And then um, I use a synthetic rope for the most part for the drop, for the actual drop line. Um, for this one in particular, um, the spot where I like to go get green crabs, it's on a dock. So I like to use a piece of a block of wood to um, sort of camouflage it. So I'll stuff this into the underneath the dock so no one can see it. And walk away with my trap and black line. I usually go. I usually do better at night for green crab. Um, and then if you if you're worried about your stuff falling in the water, or your kids are helping you catch crab or whatever, um, you actually make a knot in one of these and actually put a water bottle on it in case you drop in the water so you can snag it back it'll help a lot and then as far as length of the rope I like to use I like to keep 50 feet with me that's just me because sometimes I'm fishing out or I'm dropping these things off a really high pier and you want to make sure you have enough um, all right now trap number two I bought this basket off of um, Walmart. Originally, all side, all four sides pop down. Um, I'm the type of person. I'm not. I'm not trying to sit there all day and pick this thing up and down. I want to leave it, have it filled with crab, and then come back like an hour or two later. I don't like picking these things up and down. So what I did to this one was, I'm trying to show you better what it looks like. So some adjustments I did to it was I just secured. All the door shut, zip ties, whatever I can find, I didn't really care. Um, I ran this piece of brake tubing. It's stainless stainless steel brake tubing for car vehicles, automobiles. Um, so I just pinch this right here. Holds aside the corners. So this is very sturdy stuff. This isn't going to rust either. Um, there's my drop line right there. Um, went down to the beach. And I actually found bits of lobster trap sitting around, so I actually cut out some of the, the mesh from the trap itself, popped this in there, zip tied it, um, and that was really it. And then this, make sure you have some brake bracing in there, because like I said, you'd be smacking this thing off the dock and that type of thing. Um, so the original trap itself that was untouched with the doors, with all four doors functioning properly as they should, I didn't like it. Um, <clears throat> I feel like a lot of other critters were getting in there and ripping up the bait and making it um, disappear faster than they showed like sea perch and that type of thing. They ripped that stuff apart. Um, then I had to change the bait out and check it more often. So th with this thing right here, I actually shoved, I have a snap, snap swivel on here, and I put that, I just snap it anywhere in there. I like to snap it towards the back of the trap. And the reason for that is because I put this cover right here, because what you'll see happen are these green crabs, these smaller crabs will actually put their arm or their claws straight through this mesh or this mesh right here, and they can actually reach the bait and pull it through. Um, that's not what you want. You want them to actually get in the trap and actually catch them. So I put this here. I put the hook. This is a three-out hook, snap swivel. Um, I put this towards the back so the crabs can't really get at it with their claws, they'll have to find a way in to get it. Um, and then as far as this lobster mesh right here that comes from the traps, I always found these washed up on the beach, I was re pretty much reusing them. Um, I like these because the crabs will walk in, it's bright, it's pretty um, prominent for them to find, and then they walk in there, and then I feel like for some reason I watch the crabs try and get out of it, they get stuck at their natural instinct just to go under stuff. So they get stuck under there, and they have a harder time figuring out what's going on. Um, this thing, this is probably my favorite trap, this thing. All right, something I forgot to mention. So if you see these green strings in the center of this trap that are attached to that green mesh, 
that actually keeps the green mesh from coming out the front of the trap. Um, it holds it in place and it also holds the mesh up off the bottom a little bit, about an inch in the back off the bottom so the crabs will wander underneath it and they can't find their way out. Um, and also I just made a little trap door on the top that I forgot to mention to obviously put bait on the hook and to empty out the crab. I got this thing filled up like three quarters of the way and that's like a gallon and a half of crabs. So, um, should be more than enough. And then, yeah, you'll get your white leggers in there. And this, sometimes I catch giant shore crabs or giant Asian crabs in here. It works really well. Um, so again, I use hooks to secure the bait in there because I don't want, I want to keep the bait as long as possible. And I hook it through the pogies head or whatever. Um, and as far as baits, I use leftover trout. They may have sitting around Pogies work the best. Uh, I, I don't know. I will not use chicken legs or anything like that. Um, when I drop, actually, when you see the pogie drop down to the bottom in the trap, you'll see the oils coming up off the bottom, and that's exactly what you want. You want the tide to carry that stuff all the way down, um, down current. So, all right, let me go inside where it's not so crazy lit. All right, back out of the wind, so now I can talk to you. So, as far as beets, cut pogie, cut mackerel. Salmon heads, if they're available to you, um, I also cut up any rainbow trout that I might have. They're pretty oily for the most part. Um, also, I forgot to mention, when you put them in the trap, make sure the like the tail end, you don't have any extra bait falling over the side of the trap, especially if you're using a basket trap, because obviously the crabs won't have a need to go in the trap. They'll eat it right outside the trap, and you will catch less. That's how it works. Um, and as far as areas to go catch green crab, I stay away from mud flats in general. Any place where you see it low tide, it's just mud. Stay away from it for the most part. Um, because these green crabs are really sensitive to changes in salinity. So these mud flats are going to get hit by rain. Um, the crabs will not go there for a couple of days. I've noticed at my beach, if it rains out and I'm trying to catch green crab, it's frustrating because now I can't catch them footsteps away from my door and I have to drive somewhere and get them. So I usually have to wait another three, four, five days for the salinity to pop back up down at the end of my road. So you want to find somewhere where there's always water around docks. Um, I like to drop my traps around seawalls, like most like uh, wooden seawalls you can find them. There's plenty of spaces for crab to stay in there. They feel safe. They could get away from um, the eels, the stripers, the tatog if they're in the area. Um, and I like to go fishing at night for them. I'm trying to think what else. So if you're trying to catch Asian crab, you can't catch them in the area. The Asian crab, they will go into the traps. Um, the Asian crab, they have these really sharp legs on them. Um, they, they cling really tight to the wood, the rocks, and they're extremely skittish. They, they will go into the traps, but it's, it's pretty rare. And if you do catch them, usually they're pretty chunky, like two inches, three inches across. I've caught them. Um, as far as storing and saving these green crab for a trip that might be two days late, two or three, a couple days later than when you catch them, I like to put them in five gallon buckets and I do not put them in buckets with water. I don't leave water in there with them. So I make sure the bucket's empty. There's no water in there. And there's a couple different reasons for that. So if you fill the bucket with seawater and you put crabs in there, they're living things. They will use up all the oxygen in the water and they'll asphyxiate themselves. And the second reason is because they're, again, they're living things. They pee, they poop, they produce ammonia. That will kill the crabs if they're sitting in water and they're just breathing that stuff in and they're asphyxiating themselves, they're poisoning themselves. Um, so how I combat that is, so I'll catch initially catch the green crab. I'll let them sit in a bucket of water while I'm fishing. When I'm ready to leave, I will dump the water out as best as I can and I'll put seaweed on top of them if I can find it um, or I'll put a shopping bag over the top of the bucket. Um, and the reason for that is if you say put these green crab in a refrigerator, the refrigerator's job is to pull moisture out of the air 
and it will kill the green it will kill the crabs that you're trying to save for bait it'll dry out their gills they'll die um, if that's the way you're going to go is putting them in the fridge shopping bag over the top if you can you can leave seaweed in there with them and um, you still got to do water changes because even though there's no water in there the crabs still store moisture water inside of their shells to keep their organs wet and eventually they pee they poop still even though there's no water in the bucket they're still producing waste that waste will sit at the bottom of the bucket and it looks like this thick cola colored water that's their waste you need to rinse that out with seawater if you can um, to keep them from poisoning themselves because it could be enough we're at a bottom of a five gallon bucket if you have enough crabs in there it'll build up an inch or so, inch, inch or so, and that'll kill all the crabs in the bottom of the bucket. Um, and it makes your fridge stink. Um, you can keep the crab out um, open to air, like room temperature, but I wouldn't do it very long. I'll do it for two days max. Um, that's just me. They'll last longer, but um, that's an option. Another option is leave them in a big storage bin at the end of the street. If you can do that, again, I wouldn't do it on a mud flat. A, it gets hot out, kill them. Um, critters, raccoons and stuff, water rats will get in there and kill them. Don't do that. Um, I think that's really, really it. So just be careful when you're storing the green crab. Oh, if you use, if you do use seaweed to keep the crabs wet, the seaweed decays and that also will poison the green crab so if it turn if you see the seaweed on top of the crab turning mushy change it out and do a, um, a quick water wash through dump out all the water get fresh seaweed put it on top then i would still put a, um, a bag on top just to keep the moisture in there so um temperature i think for, i usually keep them at 40 degrees in the fridge i think is good 43 40 to 45 ish so the cold temperature slows down their metabolism they'll pee less um they will last quite a while and then you but you still have to do water changes on them and then when you're ready to use them um take them out of the fridge they'll take maybe an hour or so to warm up and they'll get really lively again and then another trick with the trade is when you're using the green crabs for tatag, don't waste any part of the crab. So if you're trimming the legs off, save the legs for chum. I'll just snip them into a pint, little pint container that I'd use for clams. And then when you're ready to go fishing or for tatag and you have those green crab legs, start chucking them out every 20 minutes. And then if you do, oh, also another trick, if you start catching spider crabs, do not throw them out. They're not useless. They're not garbage. Keep them for chum. Crush them up and throw them in a separate bucket, like a three-gallon bucket, five-gallon bucket. Those are excellent chum. They're really juicy. Um, lots of good stuff in there. They're really There's a lot of volume and organs and that type of thing. They make a mess, but that's perfect for tatag. You chuck that in the rocks. Um, the water, um, chuck it in the water to chum and... All kinds of stuff I've seen come over. I've seen trigger fish, scup, sea bass, tatag, sea perch, you name it, will come over and then it'll bring other fish over, the stripers and all that type of thing. So um, that's really it. Um, that's all I have for trapping green crab. And if you guys want to see how I catch other types of green crab, I can show you that. And I will bring you up while I use one of these traps soon. So, all right, guys, thank you. I hope you learned something about catching these green crab for Tatag. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.